Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw a Rottweiler in pastels. Now the first thing that I like to get drawn in is the eye. This here is where the main emotion and expression stems from, so I do want to make sure that I've got that right early on before I tackle any other part of the subject. Now here you can see that I am creating a colour swatch because this tutorial is available on my Patreon channel all in real time and I was just showing my Patreon members how you can mix your colours depending on where they sit on that colour wheel to get that one colour we can see in our reference photo. Now colour selection and how to pick our pastel pencils is one of the questions that I'm asked more frequently on social media so I do like to make sure that I cover this in my in-depth tutorials on Patreon. But you can layer your pastel pencils in a variety of ways to get what colour we can see in our reference photo. Now my main priority when it comes down to that is the value of that colour. So here for example I'm making sure to start off with a really dark base and then I can build up my lighter details in the black fur from there. Now of course there is always going to be an exception. So with the Rottweiler, the orange markings like on the eyebrow and around the muzzle area, I do have to make sure that they don't get muddying up of the layers and this can happen very easily when working with reds, yellows and oranges. So you can see for this orange marking on the eyebrow, I have put in a bit more of a lighter layer and soon I'm gonna go in and darken that on top rather than starting with a darker base layer and trying to add my vibrant oranges on top. So when it came to drawing the dark fur, here my main priority is I did want to capture the shine on this Rottweiler's coat. It was absolutely beautiful. Now in order for me to do that, again, I do have to make sure that my base layers are dark enough so that then my additional lighter layers on top are gonna appear bright enough. Now if you're using a highlighted color and you feel it's not quite as punchy or as really light as you would like, the main cause of that is likely to be that your base layers aren't dark enough. So if you were to darken your base layer, you'll find that your highlighted pencils will be more visible. Now the one thing that I do focus on in my in-depth tutorials on Patreon, and I mention it throughout all of my tutorials here on YouTube, is the importance of a base layer. Now you can see here that before I started working with those lighter greys, I am making sure that I've got a really soft base layer from my lights to my darks. I don't have any harsh edges, I do make sure there that I've got that really well blended so then I can easily build up my soft looking details on top. Now I did decide to do this portrait just with pastel pencils, I do have the option of using soft pastel sticks or pan pastels but I wanted to show that you can create beautiful portraits, very photo realistic portraits just with the pastel pencils, you don't need any other supplies. Now when drawing black fur, the, the pencils here and how I'm layering them is very deliberate. So I like to build up my layers gradually and I'll use many, many layers. It's not just about putting in your base layer and then jumping into your brightest highlights. You want to be looking at that photo and drawing in the fur that's closest to the skin first and then building up your highlights as you go. Now, something else that you'll see from all of my tutorials here on YouTube is how I like to work in small sections. So I don't work with one solid base layer for the entire animal and then work on additional layers on top. I do like to work on two or three square inches at a time. You now if I'm working on something that's particularly challenging, I will break that up into maybe one square inch. So I really just focus on that one tiny section. Once I've got that about 80% complete, I can then move on to the next. Now the exception when drawing black shiny fur like on this Rottweiler is I do like to work with a slightly larger area as you can see here because the shine of the fur it looks like it rolls over so it works from dark to light and then back into another darker section. So in order to get that nice seamless transition we do have to work with a little bit more of that um, larger section so we've got enough space to go from dark into our mid-tones to the highlights, the top part of that shine, and then back over to the next darker section. Now this will become more visible the more of this Rottweiler is drawn in because the top section of her head contains more of that shine where we've got some of the creases in her fur. But with, with the creases, the position of the highlights and shadows, they are never random. So you can see here that V section in between her eyes there at the top of her head, 
that there is a very important section to get right. That's indicating that that's where the center of her skull should be. So if that was positioned too high, I'm gonna make her forehead look really tall. If it's over to the left or the right, I'm gonna potentially make her face look like a very different shape. So the highlights and shadows, where those highlights are positioned, are gonna potentially adjust what that animal looks like in our portrait. Now, of course, when we're doing pet portrait commissions, this is something to pay very close attention to because it can not only adjust what that animal looks like, but it can adjust the expression. So here, if we were to change where the highlights and shadows are on the top section of her head, you might potentially make her look like that she's frowning a little bit more, especially if they are a little bit too harsh. And let's say you were drawing a chocolate Labrador that had the same amount of shine. It doesn't matter about the color of that fur, but the position of the highlights and shadows are very important regardless of the animal. Now this portrait really does show it perfectly with how to incorporate additional colors into the black fur to make it more realistic and have more depth. So throughout this, I have used a lot of blue pencils and also a couple of purples. This here has helped to not only build up that depth, but has added more of that three dimensional shape to the face. Now, when we do add the blues, we don't want to be adding those everywhere. We do want to be making sure that that fur still looks black, but that it's got that bluish tint. Now, whether or not the black fur has that blue tint is gonna depend on where that photograph was taken. So because this Rottweiler was photographed outside, the reflection of the sky is really catching that black fur. She has a very beautiful shiny coat, so that's gonna really exaggerate that even more. So I do want to make sure that I've got that visible in my portrait. It's just very important to make sure that we don't overuse those colors and make that fur look blue rather than black. Now, when it came to working on the muzzle area, I do have a few tutorials here on YouTube that show how to draw dog noses. I'll link one or two of those in the description below if it's of interest. Now the first thing that I wanna be focusing on once I've built up my base layer is changing my pencil technique. Now I do also have another video here on YouTube and it's my top tips for drawing realistic fur in pastels. I'll link that in the description below as well if it's of interest. And I speak about there about three main things in terms of pencil technique. That's your fur direction, fur length and fur thickness. Now all of this is gonna be decided depending on the fur texture and the animal that we're drawing. But with a short coated breed like this and the same with a Rottweiler, for, uh, sorry, a Labrador for instance, would be the fur around the nose and muzzle area is significantly shorter than anywhere else on the face. So here I've had to really reduce and shorten my pencil strokes in order to replicate that. If I were to have kept my pencil strokes and the pencil technique the same as the top section of her face, I'm gonna make the muzzle area here look far more fluffier than this breed has. So it's really, really important to pay very close attention to the length of the pencil strokes. Now the fur direction is also something that can adjust the shape of the face. So for instance, this area here on the muzzle, if we make our pencil strokes too flat and they're not curved down towards the lower corners, we can make the face look really wide. And the curve of those pencil strokes is important. So I don't ever just draw a diagonal straight line. There is always going to be a bend in the middle. This is gonna to help to build up more of a natural looking fur texture. Now here is a prime example between the eyes where you've got the bridge of the nose that meets the top surface of the skull as it slopes upwards. This here is where we really need to focus on the fur direction. Now, if you're drawing breeds like a pug or a bulldog, they are known as what is brachiocephalic. So that means that they have that scrunched up nose. They don't have the length of the bridge of the nose like this breed here or something like a Springer Spaniel or a Labrador. This is where we're gonna have to make sure that we are studying the length of the pencil strokes and the direction of those pencil strokes. Now the thickness of the pencil strokes is really determined by a couple of things, how sharp your lead is, but most importantly, how much pressure is being applied to the pencil. Quite often, the carandage details are gonna be a little bit thicker because the lead is much larger than the other brands. Something like your Carbofello and your Pitts are much more of a narrower lead but you can still get fine details with Karen Dash. It's all in how you use that pencil. So if anything that I've covered so far in this video is something you would like to see more of, then I will link my Patreon in the description below where the real time tutorial of this is available. And I do have that voiceover while I'm drawing. So every single process is explained in the moment, which I do think makes it far more easier to follow along to. There are no sections sped up or cut out. 
So at this point, I'm nearly ready now to start working on the collar and her body. And the real temptation is to start adding the whiskers because the face was complete. But the one thing I wanna be making sure of is that the whiskers are left until the last layer. They overlap everything else. And in some cases, those whiskers may come down towards the chin area. And I haven't yet quite finished that. So I would always make sure to draw in the entire subject and add those whiskers in at the very end. Now when it came to working on the fur here on her chest, I did have to work with the same layering process, so I start off with my dark layers and then build my lighter details on top, but I did have to change my pencil technique slightly. So my pencil strokes have had to be a little bit longer because the fur on the neck and as we work our way down to the body does naturally get longer, so I do have to be making sure that I've captured that. Now before I could finish off with the details on the top section of that neck, I've had to draw the collar in first. The reason being, because the fur on the neck is a little bit longer, there are individual hairs that are overlapping that collar. So I do have to be making sure that I draw what's behind that in first. Otherwise, if I were to draw those details and then add the collar, I'm gonna have to draw around them and that just makes it so much more time consuming and far more complicated. So whenever I've got a collar on a breed of dog, any animal where the fur is longer and it is overlapping, as you can see here, I've just added a few of those lighter details. It's always worthwhile to add that collar first or the harness, whatever it might be, and then go back in and add the details on top. And this is where studying your reference photo and really understanding what is behind something or what is sitting on top of something else really does help to simplify the drawing process. So I decided to draw in the ginger part of the markings here last because some of those lighter hairs were sitting on top of the darker fur. So it made sense to me to draw the dark fur first and then finish off with my oranges and add those details on top. Now lastly here, I'm gonna be working on the bottom section of her chest. Now it's at this point where it'd be very tempting to maybe rush the portrait. Because we've done the face, we've done the bulk of the portrait, we have a tendency here to subconsciously speed through processes. So you really want to be making sure that this is given as much time as it needs. We don't want to be speeding this up and then the chest bring down that portrait. This still has to have that nice level of realism. Now as you can see, it comes together quickly because I'm working with larger areas of darker fur. So I'm able to map in more of my darkest base layer and then build up the details on top. Now because the light source in the reference photo was coming from the right hand side, the left side that I've just drawn in here is quite dark. There aren't too many sections of that shinier fur. However on this side, when I start to map it in now, I'm going to be using a few more of my lighter colours and really build up the depth and reinforce the shine on the coat. Now what also helps with the shine again is the pencil technique. So once I've put in my blues and purples there, now I'm gonna start working with my mid-tone greys. By adjusting the curve and direction of those pencil strokes, it's following her shoulder blades, it's really helping to build up the form of her body. This is gonna to help to make that fur look shiny. It's accurate to that animal. And because I've captured accurately where that fur changes direction at each key point, especially around her shoulder blades there, this is automatically now making it look like that shine is going over the main structures of the fur. So all of this is also important. And this is where I add those whiskers and finish up the portrait. So I really do hope that this video has been useful. If you've got any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below. I'm more than happy to help if I can. And if this was useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference to my channel. I do upload two to three videos to YouTube every week. So if you'd like to get notified of that content, then don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell button. If you are interested in any of my in-depth step-by-step tutorials, then I will link my Patreon in the description below. I will be uploading another video to YouTube at the end of the week, but as always, thank you so much for watching.